Good evening. Good evening and uh, welcome to Horrid Wizard and Friends, uh, the podcast of midlife crisis and self-denial. Already, are we straight into incognito and, mode? Uh, by the way, do you like my uh, new setup where I have this very professional looking um, light yeah, I can, here? I can see them in the reflection of your incognito mode shades and it looks like you've got eyes. Well, I have got eyes here, they are. No. Uh, how have you been? Because we haven't recorded for a couple of weeks. Due to yeah, some... all good. Just uh, some, you know, family responsibilities getting in the way as usual. I had you this know? very sad realization the other day. You know what? I had a realization that we are now the generation that has to sort shit out. Yeah. You know, before when stuff went wrong, generally, there was some elder person that used to do those things and you would def defer we to are... their knowledge and experience. Now we that's not... us. Yeah, we're those elder people and we have to deal with this shit of, that other people can't be bothered to clean up. Really. Have you been on your neighborhood watch this evening? Yeah, no, yesterday I was on the old neighborhood watch and we, uh, uh, you know, uh, shooed off some. Uh, some Did you break uh, up some fun from happening? I think that's the main remit of the uh, yes, yes, exercise. Yes. Yeah, because that's <laughs> all that happens in my area. Talking about realizations, I, I had an unfortunate realization. The other day, I was watching a scene from Family Guy in which, you know how they go to this uh, bar and they just sit together on a table and they have a chat. And um, they do a sketch where suddenly during this conversation, one of them is like, wow, we're so interesting. We're so cool. We should make this into a podcast, our everyday conversations. And I thought, oh, for God's <laughs> sake, you know what? That's exactly what I'm doing, isn't it? Like there no, isn't anybody I know my age who hasn't got some kind of podcast or video cast no, that nobody watches. The thing is, yeah, you say that, but mm -hmm. earlier on, I was just going through WhatsApp statuses because I'm so bored yeah. and I have a sad life and I like to see what other people are getting up to. And there was one person that we both know had put up and like a promotional leaflet type sort of post that says, yeah. come to this coffee shop on a Sunday morning and, you know, uh, talk to us about being a man in this day and age now. Right, I okay. couldn't give a flying fuck about what you feel like as a man. Uh, it was called come, uh, I don't want to really say it, come as you are, but that's how it, what it was called, Kaya. And I went, who the fuck's going to attend that? You know, uh, there's, there's a couple of problems with this. Firstly, I don't have any time for strangers. I mean, I barely have time for my family and loved ones. Um, so I like who's going to turn up to a coffee shop and pour their heart out to a stranger? I mean, there's better ways of accessing therapy. Maybe these people can't afford therapy. So, you know, it, it's the next best thing, isn't it? I guess. No, maybe these, these people are on a type of a journey, if you know what I mean. Well, because I know the person that you are talking about, I can very much confirm that they are on a type of a journey. Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? You're a man. Deal with it, isn't it? Like every other man. Just deal with it. Well, you know, there are there are some exceptions to this rule. I mean, I Just think the state of us proves that men can't deal with jack all, actually. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> because I mean, look at our situation. Let's let's just let's just say, uh, I mean, you've got a really good way of dealing with the dryness of your lips mid mid conversation. Mm, yeah, so, I actually, yeah. <laughs> like, like you, I like the taste of my lips, Barbara. Uh, how have I been trying all week I've been trying to just get a taste of those lips but you've been denying me every moment yeah you actually so. set a very frightening challenge the other day which I declined because I think that what we should it's a bit do strange it's a bit strange that you decline it because normally you're first to it you see yeah you see I think that what we should do before going into that zone I think that we should exhaust other possibilities that's what I think I think that what it is is that what what you don't want to do in life is you don't want to strip away layers of mystery and wonder i think you want to have something left for the time of enjoyment if you see what i mean just before that nuclear warhead hits so i've got a chance yeah yeah you know uh, well that's a good question people always used to ask what are you going to do if you find out that there's a few seconds left or a few minutes left if the four minute warnings uh, yeah that the world's going to end the nukes have been dispatched and everything's gone bad and I don't know why, but <laughs> since... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But when you said dispatch, I could just think of like a Hermes delivering this nuclear warhead. So they won't, they won't actually <laughs> land in their places that they need to go to. Yeah, or there's <laughs> like somewhere a delivery van will just like blow up because the person couldn't be asked to deliver it. Um, yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> uh, 
That's a you know that's a good way of foiling um, these these terrorist let's attacks, give, isn't let's it? Not, let's not give ideas to anybody. No, I think this is a very good way. What what we could do is if we start marketing Hermes as a delivery company for say uh, you know anthrax or sarin poisonings, then people will just never get get killed by these attacks because Hermes Absolutely. doesn't deliver. They do not deliver. They'll put it in the bin. The bin will blow up, and that's about it. Well, uh, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, so all right then. <laughs> so that we've we've sorted that out. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the other the other thing is I I made a I I was it was revealed to me. Get your words out, son. Get your words out. It's very chilling. That's why I can't get my words out. Um, there is actually a person that we know, and I won't reveal their identity. Who has not only subscribed to this channel, but has pressed the bell icon. And I, honestly, I'm not joking. They have pressed the bell icon so that when we make these, they get an alert to say have, that we have made it. I might have to phone you after the show and find out who this person is because it's, you manage the account. It's very worrying. And I think that, you know, maybe an intervention is, uh, you know, this person is, oh, hang on. Oh, God, I didn't put it on mute again, didn't I? That's the reminder go. saying YouTube. God's sake. Oh, because they're early. We're recording about Because we're recording 10 minutes early, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this person can't go to that uh, man's mm -hmm. gathering that you mentioned because they're not a man. They're a woman. Oh, right. Okay. But still, it's very worrying indeed. So I think that at some point we will have to do something about that. Um, I, I, we've also started having list, uh, or listener or viewer interactions. So now one of the things requested is comfortable underwear recommendations. So we can come back to that. Um, oh got, my days some, can i just stop nuts. there yeah so yesterday last night i had one of those nights where i didn't sleep and uh i thought to myself i'm not joking i am not joking this is literally what happened last night i thought to myself i need to start a reviewing podcast video cast type show that reviews underpants okay right yes so <laughs> I mean, it's really it's really hard for me to react when you say stuff like this out of the blue. I hope you appreciate this. I mean, if the guys just ask for, you know, comfortable underwear, so it's kind of ties yeah. in. Now, people can send their underpants in and I'll happily review them for them. You know, what? that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad recommend. idea at all. But I think that on that same evening that you received your first delivery, obviously don't send by Hermes viewers. Um, I think that Barbara oh. over here would probably just die yeah. of asphyxiation or something. Like, there's a limit yeah. to how much you can sniff something, isn't it, Barbara? So I'm concerned now. I, I think that I, I think that on on balance, on reflection, maybe people shouldn't send you those items. Um, so look, so there, there we go. Um, see, this is a concern that I had because <clears throat> uh, uh, a well, cousin of mine, as you know, the people's has, under, underwear. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no. You see, a cousin of mine has started doing um, sports massage therapy, and I've been going to see him every month or so. And actually, it's 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 been very beneficial for me. But um, we've been focusing mainly on the upper body and back and neck areas. And he said to me the other day, he said, "Look, um, what uh, you need to come in for like a lower body um, treatment." And I just suddenly realized that actually. You know, although my underwear is very comfortable, it's extremely baggy and loose. And so if he was to do any kind of manipulations of my limbs, then it's not going to really serve the purpose for which I need it. So, uh, you know, I, but I think you're a different kind of guy. I think you you, you wear this sort of leg hugging underwear, yeah, don't you? So I, I, wear, I wear like the trunks style. Mm, yeah, you see, so you'd be okay in that scenario. Whereas I'm, I'm actually thinking I need to go to the shop and buy something different before I turn up to this place and, you know, horrify everybody. Oh, because... wow. <laughs> before you horrify everybody. Yeah, really. yeah. Be... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's possibly, it's possible to be too impressed, for example, you know. <laughs> Just remember but... a couple of pictures we shared to each other. Yeah, yeah, that was for encouragement. I think you were you were in good company at the time. At the time, if I, yes. If yeah, I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, at the time. And, yes, and so is. you happened to also show the picture that I sent you to another person yeah. who was who was delighted by it. Yeah. So I'm I'm pleased for both of you. Let's just say that. Um, the uh, the I was I was. Uh, yeah, excellent. Yeah, I should have put these on <laughs> earlier, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, so Barbara, uh, some congratulations are in order for two things. Yeah. Uh, you, could, you could say two rather different things. The first thing is that you received delivery of your brand new 
uh, Apple Mac uh, laptop computer. Nope. Yeah, I don't know I what haven't... they're called. What, what are they called? What's the proper name for them? Mac MacBook Pros. A MacBook Pro. Okay. And the other thing to congratulate you on is that Madeleine Albright is dead. Um, it's very frustrating, actually, when these people die because, like, he said, he said she died of cancer and not old age. So, like, does this mean that if she didn't get this disease, she was going to live even flipping longer than that? Yeah, I mean, Henry, yeah. Henry Kissinger is still alive. Like, this is how long these people live. Yeah, but he's but, not human. He's 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 a he's a shape shifting reptilian type sort of character. Apparently, yeah. is what everyone calls him. Yeah, but anyway, on the I um, think it's a, I think uh, he's a genius. Well, person. conspiracies aside, I mean, he's it's possible to just be a bad human as well. You don't even need to be a reptile or whatever these people say. <laughs> yeah, do you know what it, I mean? It's possible just to be quite a bad human. I mean, in her case, in spe you know specifically, obviously, everybody's uh, celebrating that she was the first female U.S. Secretary of State, which is a huge achievement. However, she did also say that the death of five hundred thousand Iraqi children was a very hard choice, and I quote. But the price, we think the price is worth it. So that's oh just just as 500,000 children. So if I had a pound for every one of those children, I'd, I'd be able to sort of pay my mortgage off several times. It's very Putin-esque what she's just said, isn't it? Yeah, I think at that level, a certain level, they're all kind of the same. I mean, if you, this is another thing because Britain went arse licking to Iran and Saudi Arabia uh, recently because they need some oil and gas from different places. And... Um, no, it's uh, the one where they also have an outstanding debt from the 70s, don't they? That's true. But I think they want to get oil and stuff from there because they don't want to do business with Russia at the moment. And um, I was thinking to my the ironic thing is that a lot of people uh, have been saying that this is very immoral um, and this is terrible. We're having to do. And I just started looking at the, the map to see where in the world is oil actually produced. And I don't think it's possible to have morals if you like oil. And the issue is that the people complaining about this, you know, the standard sort of Greenpeace types, it's, they've got a very good argument. And it's very nice to say, yes, we're killing the planet and we need to uh, we need to reduce our reliance upon these fuels. But in the interim, you know, what I, you know, I, do you want to live in a tent in your garden and, and eat the spuds that may or may not be growing in the soil? I mean, we have to somehow survive as a species as well. We've become reliant on this and it's going to take us probably just as long to decouple our reliance it's gonna, from it's, it. It's going to take a couple of lifetimes to get out of it, to be fair. I think um, so, yeah. I, yeah, I, I would rather live in an airport, you know, see, seeing as you, you sent me that article earlier today. <laughs> Oh, yes. And I went through every single one of those. I didn't. I didn't. And there was a Japanese I, I, man was of, my yeah, favorite. The, yeah. So, so some of the scenarios are at, at some of the. They've been there like three can you years. Bring up the, four, can you bring up the article? This is good to discuss. So this is a Wikipedia entry, and it's simply yeah, called yeah. "List of People." It's right there. List of notable people who have lived for significant periods of time in an airport. And there's one guy. He's he did like decades, didn't he? Yeah, some guy's been there for years. The record okay, so holder got... was living in an airport for decades. Um, and, and it's okay. So we've got we've got Edward Snowden, American, uh, who was in the Sheremetyevo International Airport, Moscow, Russia. I don't know if I've said that correctly. Right. Uh, from Probably the twenty third of June to the first of August, two thousand. So thirty nine days he was in that airport. Uh, Which is long, but you know, there are but... others. There's people on here that have been there for like 9,862 days, approximately 27 years. <laughs> wow. What a G. You know, one of, things when when I was little, when I, one of the things when I was little is I really liked airports and I, and I quite like the idea of living in one. Because if you think about it, everything is there that you would need. I love airports and I just come with you sometimes just for the sake of it, just for the sake of going to an airport. That's funny true. Actually. People, funny, funny people and funny things happen at airports, which I love. Sometimes what we do, if we say, for example, are dropping off a friend to an airport, I'll get you to post a status in which me and you are at the airport. And then you just get inundated with, with messages saying, where are you going? Why are you with that guy again? <laughs> yeah, they basically think we're so we do this on purpose. We troll, we troll our yeah. our followers, which are normally family members and friends, and we will just on purposely put something like Oh, here we go again. Another one. Jet set lifestyle. Here we go. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I had a friend like that. Uh, I remember once I received a call from him and I was at a restaurant and he was like, oh, um, can you check me in with you on Facebook? I was like, what? What on earth are you talking about? He's like, yeah, yeah, just I like um, I like just saying I'm in different places. So and once I, 
So once I was abroad and he was like, can you check me in with you where you are? And I was like, look, I don't even put on social media when I'm abroad because I don't want someone to burgle my house and kill my family. So, um, yeah, there are, there are people like this that exist. But, you know, Facebook is like the bad area that you grow up in uh, and all the nice people leave. This is this is another problem with, yeah, with, move to with Twitter. Facebook. Yeah, I realized how bad Facebook was when um, uh, a few weeks ago I just opened it because I I, op- I use Facebook for promoting this this video cast and nothing else okay pretty much um and yeah but people were lamenting on facebook that um amir khan had been knocked out again and 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 there were some incredibly poorly written tributes to him um and then uh, for some reason support for amir khan and 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 saying that you know he's one of the greatest he never ducked a fight he did all of, and and people just like paying tribute to this guy who as we know is clearly a knob and a joker. And I thought to myself, you know what? Support for Amir Khan is a distinct measure of the decay of society. So if this were, if that's what the metaverse is, lots of people whose role model is Amir Khan, then I think that we should all delete the Facebook app today. Thank you for coming to my talk. (laughs) Could could I get you to sign my copy of your book after the show, please? I'll sign your tits for you, Barbara. I'll sign anything. Please, please. My day. That was a bit of a statement you made there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, the guy's got his own marriage uh, hall in Bolton. Leave him alone. He's just making an honest living. Is it just work. like loads of Skype screens in there when you go yeah, in? Yeah, it's too funny. <laughs> too funny. Anyway, so what else has been happening? How was your week? Uh, my week was nice because I saw you almost every day. So nice obviously, that's it. that's always a good thing. Um, as you can see in the background, the white. Uh, teddy bear has now gained a friend and there's a brown teddy bear in the loft because uh, apparently I can't burn these bears we have to keep them because of I don't know my daughter's sentimental reasons um, well they're looking very comfortable in the corner at the moment so I don't want anything to happen yeah we need to um, I mean you know you can let allow your imagination to run wild um, yeah, oh it has already don't worry about that so anyway coming back to your macbook pro yeah uh, there was an unboxing that we forgot to film that we should have actually put on the channel. And I want you to describe the unboxing if you want. Yeah, so I have a twat of a friend who was all, always... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, no, no, the reason I'm confused is because you've described your friend as a twat, but you only have one friend and that's me. So I, I'm just, I'm confused at the calculation that I'm making. I, th- I, th- I think everyone will agree with me once I tell them what actually this twat of a friend of mine does every okay. time I unbox something new and shiny. So as I, un- I was unboxing, I mean, when you take the lid off, it's a bit of a moment. It, it, it takes about 30, 40 seconds for it to come off. Is this, sorry, right. is this, uh, are you still talking about the MacBook now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, right. unbox- I'm unboxing Fine. Uh, Fine, uh, yeah. the MacBook Pro and not my mail order bride. Um, okay. So as I, as which I. Which you did the, find, by the way, a website. Yeah, we found a really, really good website for that, yeah. um, which we'll discuss maybe on another show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I will need like two layers of these. Two layers of those, yeah. So, um, so lovely. <laughs> it had nice little, you know, cellophane wrapped on the box. Took that off. You were enjoying the aesthetic experience, weren't you? I, I love, I love, I love the packaging of Apple products more than the product itself. So, feeling the matte laminate cardboard box, took it off. Lovely grease paper, which you actually wanted to bake cookies on afterwards. Yes, um, it was yeah, my quality and then, that was. And a lovely MacBook, shiny MacBook Pro in graphite gray or whatever color it's called. And then, and you went, ah, shiny bit, which is the Apple logo. And then went to right in the and, middle. There's an Apple right, logo, really, really shiny. Like it is literally a mirror. And you went and put your thumbprint right in the middle of it. Now you have been doing this my whole life, not your whole, but my whole life. Every time <laughs> I remember specifically, I bought a Porsche design lacy hard drive. That was also very, very shiny. And you had like a plastic protective film on it. And as I peeled it off, you went and just smothered all your greasy fat paws all over it. Look. And what was my response? There was only two words that came out of my mouth straight away. And what were they? I don't know if you can repeat it on the show. Um, it was, I think it was just some, <laughs> swear, some swears. I know it was swear. It was swear. Yeah, you know, I'm swearing. delighted because as a fat bastard, I produce a lot of grease from my skin. Yeah. It's the grease I don't you know, like. You can see Touching it shining. Fine. Can you see it shining from my forehead right now, for example? Because it's towards the end of the day. I've been sweating profusely because it's like above 18 degrees Celsius, uh, you know, during the day. So 
it's just nice to have an outlet or a useful, um, you know, a useful way of I mean, using I'll, this I'll, grease. I've asked you to come and smother my <laughs> me with that grease, but you never do. But you know, you know what? I'll start doing. I'll start wiping it off carefully and collecting it for you in a jar. As about yeah, that. please do, please yeah. do. Um, oh dear. Yeah, it really pissed me. Off, really pissed me off, by the way. But you know, I I carry a I carry one of those microfiber cloths with me everywhere I go, just to keep things clean. Um, I I tend to find myself guided in my daily life. Um, do you know what I'm going to do next time? By what I'm pisses going, you off? Yeah, really and truly, I'm going to try and you know get that finger of that print of yours and yeah. gain access to your devices and send out uh, some very nasty emails from your email account. Now this is another thing. That, <laughs> this is another thing that I do to you. So you have become paranoid in your daily life because if you ever leave your devices unlocked, I message your family and friends with interesting and colourful messages, don't I? Yeah, very colourful, I would say. But uh, uh, the other day you were in a meeting and you had your I, Apple Watch on you, and I had and you had left your phone unlocked in the other room, and I thought, okay, fair game. So I know all your passwords anyway, but that's not fair game. It's only if it's actually been left unlocked. That I seized my opportunity and I started texting people nice, kind, and sincere messages from you. And you were in the meeting and seeing these replies come buzzing in, and you were like, Oh, you know what? For fuck's sake, I know what he's doing here. <laughs> and, you, and you're powerless to act. And this is how I survive, I think, the the vicissitudes of life. Fuck the vicissitudes of life. The other day you were doing it while I was rendering some videos, Dan, and I had to go to the toilet and I said, literally, please don't fucking touch my computer. Please don't. I'm begging you, don't. You, 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 beg, you actually begged me like I had genuine power over you. Uh, um, I also oh. like this. I think this would be a, it would make a really good name for like a single or an EP. Fuck the vicissitudes of life. I think that, that we, should keep, we should write that down here. I'm noting that down, right? Yeah. The, fuck the, the vicissitudes of vicissitude. life. Is it, is it SC? Is it a CI? Or is it vicissitudes? You know what? That, that's for you oh. to find out later as homework. <laughs> okay. Fuck you. Okay. Fuck you, miss. <laughs> <coughs> uh, right. I, I suffered. I suffered just before you start. I'm, I'm guessing you got some scenarios for me to consider. Yeah, um, I have very, very much so. Been yeah, working to, on these. Uh, before, before we do that, I, I suffered a dent to my pride uh, today. Oh, actually, oh no, uh, no, yesterday. Sorry, um, it was that I posted a, a status on WhatsApp, and it was just a selfie status. And um, yeah, I noticed it. And my barber oh, got in touch with me saying, "Get the fuck out here and have a haircut, you tramp." Of course it would. So, like, I, I'm actually being being shamed by my own barber into going and attending. Where I, I mean, this is why my hair is a little bit shorter now than it was yesterday, because my barber do, actually I, shamed I do, me into getting it done. I do like your selfie posts. Uh, they really are very um, interesting, I would say. You know, it yeah. gives us a, a nice insight into your fat bastard life, really. Yeah, I think it's an insight into a mental state because you see, um, I've been all, as you know, I've been all kinds of shapes and sizes in my lifetime, and I've actually been in good shape and I've been in very bad shape, and I'm probably somewhere in between, in between right now. And in fact, uh, you know, this is another, this is a, this is a subject that we should have taken to that gentleman's gathering because, you know, uh, there was a point at which I was reluctant to start this video podcast simply because I didn't really like the way I looked. So this is a more deep conversation that we can have another time. The vulnerability of being fat, I call it, but. On a lighter note, I also think that fat bastardy is a state of mind and that you can actually you can actually still be a fat bastard whilst being in great shape. Yeah, no, so I, feel, I feel like I'm a fat bastard because yes. I'm carrying, carrying a little bit of weight at the moment and I'm like, can't, can't be dealing with this. I'm a fat bastard. So I'm now watching what, how much I eat and why I eat. So, you but know, it's a lifestyle I, as well. It's a choice. It's a, it's, it's a state of being, a state of mind. It's not just, you know, carrying... Uh, weight or being above your bmi i think that it's a it's a movement in fact you know what let's write that down as well should we should we make a rival faction and ask <laughs> gentlemen to attend the fat bastard group instead of the what was the it fat bastard, the fat bastard what, what was the one called well come as you are is that the one that, that well that, well, well that was about? the title of the the coffee morning uh, mm -hmm. the actual organization i uh, don't want to give them any public free publicity that's fine <laughs> you don't have to do that at all um what's this what i've got here can you be racist against animals i don't know why I, you know sometimes i write notes on this, this paper no you know I, what i think that was because of my stupid panda jokes this week 
No, it's because I've, I've written here, cats' lives matter. I, I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, you know what? We, I've used... Cats' lives do matter, mate. I so think it was Netflix the pro- I think it was the, the Kurt Zuma stuff. It was weeks oh, yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, anyway. that was that was weeks ago. That was weeks ago, man. Okay, so before no. we go, are you going to give me some scenarios to make choices? Oh my god, about? is it time already? I've got some a lot of things to get through here. Yeah, go on week. then. Let's let's do you. Let's do right you, then. So, this is probably from last week. Some of these are based on some of the headlines in the news. So you that's know, fine, we, we, we did take we have a long memories, Baba. Yeah, memories. that's good. So, would you rather be a squatter in an oligarch's mansion in Belgravia? <laughs> right. Or be your squatter on the toilet. Keeping in mind that both have their benefits. <laughs> First scenario allows you to piss off an oligarch, and the other allows you to clear your bowels thoroughly. Your choice. So, so the first question I would ask is: Does the olig? I'm assuming that the oligarch's mansion will have many luxurious toilets. So on that basis, but so on that basis, I think that I will choose to be in a palace of luxury on this. Whilst- while yes. taking a dump and squatting. Okay, yeah. good choice, good choice. Yeah, that's the best of both worlds, really. So that, that is quite straightforward because the other one is quite limited in the scope in the sense that, you know, if I was to spend my life squatting over that that, that toilet, then, you know, it, it could become boring very quickly. Let's just put it well, that I way. just said squatting, but I didn't say over a toilet. But anyway, moving on to the next one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, let's hope, let's hope it's not over a face. All right, go on. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather battle the dark forces of Gotham or battle the dark forces of any current or previous dictatorship, knowing the reward is either being a hero of a city that doesn't exist, mm. or have a page in history that will probably be torn out of the books once they realize that the color of your skin, which is a light shade of white mixed with brown, and it will cause you some, a lot of problems in the future. So, This is a really, really good question. So this is one of your finest works, I think. It's okay. a very deep question. It's actually a very serious question because as time goes by, I find out more and more uh, inventions or um, services to humanity that have been carried out. And we think we know the famous people behind them. And then mm. you find out that there was like a bunch of black and brown people as well that had done either the either the whole thing or a lot of groundwork surrounding the thing. Like Bill Cosby. Who haven't been credited with... Sorry, what? <laughs> Anyway, we'll get back to that. You just dropped Bill Cosby's name in the middle of a very Huxtable. serious point Dr. about Huxtable. race. Anyway, yeah, so so that does happen. So you're right about saving the city. You might go back in history and save a city and then your name is erased from the history books because somebody didn't like it. Um, or you could be a saviour of Gotham, i.e. a mythical or a fictional superhero. You know what? I think that uh, make-believe... And uh, the land of dreams, the uh, the land of uh, the world of fiction, is infinitely better than real life. So on that basis, I would like to save Gotham. Yeah, ten points for that one because I agree. Gotham yeah. deserves to be saved. Yes. Right. Last one, and then the can, deserves. And then you can ask me what I'm doing on the weekend. Uh, would you yeah. rather sell your body to keep yourself warm for that moment you are in the company of that individual? <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> that's a very, you know that's very delicately put. Well done. Yeah. That was tactful, and yeah. Go, and then go home to a cold, dark house. Mm-hmm. Or would you rather burn five lorries a month filled with surplus PPE that has made many a politician rich and wealthy post-pandemic? Well, look. <laughs> one. I see you got your. I see you got your Sunak glasses on. Yeah. So one of the yeah. Although even I'm taller than Richie Sunak. Mm. Um. So one of those scenarios. So just repeat the scenarios again for me, please. Would you rather sell your body? This is all to do with high energy prices and, and methods of keeping ourselves warm. It is indeed, tough yeah. times. Would you rather sell your body to keep yourself warm for that moment you are in the company of that individual? You know, mm-hmm. just, just sell your body for that moment. At least you'll get a bit of warmth in the day. Yeah. Uh, or would you rather burn five lorries a month filled with surplus PPE? And that has made many a politician rich and you know very successful. So look, let's let's be real now here let's <laughs> let's get to the crux of the problem which is the imminent danger to our climate yeah it's more that's more life threatening it's more world ending than any of the current issues that we are experiencing. Uh, stop chatting bullshit you know you'd sell your body so on the base I, be- I of course i would sell my body but i'm telling you why it's because burning the lorries would unfortunately release the carbon that's locked in that PPE into the atmosphere, perpetuating our current downslide into uh, oblivion and Armageddon. So the other option seems to uh, provide warmth 
that you, you know you might even suffer because it's a bit of exercise so you might even have a bit of afterburn so you would go home not need to put on the expensive boiler thus mm -hmm. saving money and saving the environment and not paying the extortionate energy bills so i think that if everyone sells their ass for at least an hour a day then we can save the world together all of us i think we should start a tariff uh, an energy company that does this and have a tariff i think it's a really good oh, idea so i yeah. thought that this was your asian mate <laughs> <laughs> tariff yeah tariff <laughs> Yes, Tariff. Yes, yeah. Tariff. All right, Tariff. You coming for a curry? Are you are you fixed or are you variable? <laughs> is it your Ramadan now, Tariff? <laughs> or is that next week? <laughs> tariff is a Hindu, by the way. <laughs> oh man. Awesome. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, good. Good good to be back on the uh, Would You Rather. So really enjoyed that. Yes, and I've so thoroughly enjoyed that. Um so this time next week, yeah, Barbara, uh, what are you up to on the weekend? Oh wow! Well, you, you wouldn't believe it. So last night I had some sort of heard some sort of rustling in the garden, and I went out to investigate. It was part of, a bit of smoke coming out. Looks like I've got a guest staying with me, and might be taking him to the doctor's because he's got a glowing finger. So I might get someone to see that. Um, okay, and then after that, I'm going to look for an intergalactic public call office because he keeps saying he wants to phone home. You absolutely sure it is the finger? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 